most amount of money a man should spend on a wedding ring for you guys? 500 grand, okay? I don't care if you're broke as sh Take your mama's life savings, take your life savings, take your grandma's life savings, and get me a rock. There is no price limit. Whatever the I pick out, you're buying. Guys, welcome to Better Bachelor. My name is Joker with a face for radio and a voice for print. Um, you know, this is an interesting story that came out from a, a Daily Mail, and it's been making rounds around the interwebs. Affairs uh, put a spring in your step, boost self-esteem and life satisfaction, but only if you're a woman, study finds. Now, when I first saw this headline, I said to myself, oh, so let me guess, only the women are allowed to cheat because if the men do it, that's bad. And they don't get a spring in their step and they don't enjoy themselves. Actually, it's worse than that. It's that women don't feel guilt over cheating anymore. Um, I, I, I'll touch on this in just a second. I did want to mention this. If you watched my video I did just last night, I talked about how women are are like losing the 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 narrative war, uh, you know, in society because they won't take accountability. They act crazy. And they're like children because they're not held re responsible for anything. And, of course, uh, they don't take responsibility for anything they do. Uh, the new This is just an article that just came out tonight. The Marvel's director, Nia DaCosta, describes critics of woke Marvel as a very, very virulent, <laughs> virulent and violent and racist and sexist and homophobic. All the things. If you if you don't like my movie, even though it's only the third movie I've directed and nothing has been a blockbuster that I've done before, if you don't like any of my work, you're all the things. It's your fault once again, everybody. <laughs> it couldn't be me. No accountability. What a surprise. This is why uh, these Hollywood and these movie franchises and the the mainstream news and everybody else that just w refuses to. Uh, to take accountability for their lies and their BS, uh, they're going to fail, and that, that's all there is to it. So I suppose you could actually say this is good news. Let me see if I can move my window just a little bit here so it's not cutting off any words. There we go. From the Daily Mail, affairs put a spring in your step, boost self-esteem uh, self and life satisfaction, but only if you're a woman. Because if you're a man, well, you actually feel regret, and women don't apparently uh, they say when George Michael, uh, George Michael sang about cheating on a partner and never, never wanting to dance again, he may have been on to something. That's because men are more likely to report low self-esteem and a decrease, a, a decrease in life satisfaction after having an affair. While for women, it's the opposite, according to a new study. Researchers from uh, Tilburg University in the Netherlands can, can uh, collected data on German adults for over 12 years and asked them about their well-being as well as their relationships. From a large cohort, they found on 609 people who'd been involved in an affair and 338 who had been the been harmed by one. Analysis revealed on the whole, women who cheated reported an increase in self-esteem and life satisfaction after the affair. Meanwhile, the opposite appeared to be true for men who suffered more after committing adultery. Now, let, let, me, let me just say this much about it. Number one, I don't know how the laws are in Germany, but I do know how they are here in the United States. In the United States, if you cheat and you're a woman, you can leave and take half of his, half of his uh, uh, materials if, you know, if he's the breadwinner. So she can cheat and leave with cash and prizes. On top of that, if you're the man and you cheat, uh, she, she can leave uh, with, with the cash and prizes. So both ways, uh, if you get caught as a man, um, you're out. And even if she did the infidelity, uh, you're, you're as a man, you're also out. So I'm pretty sure that probably has a very big deal to do with this. But it also seems that if you think about the way that the media has has painted the narratives of society today, which is men are good for money. They're not good for anything else. They're worthless. They're lazy. They're patriarchy. They're all the problems with everything in the world today, when when you cheat on somebody that's all those things, you don't feel bad about it. But you know, women we've been told are stunning and brave and awesome and wonderful and everything else. And and if you if you cheat on that person, you're a bad person. Uh, the study published in the Journal of Psycho uh, Psychological Science reads: Our analysis detected uh, one group of participants who seemed to recover and even thrive after infidelity: unfaithful women. 
Uh, potentially, women's affairs are more likely to be a result of partner dissatisfaction, and consequently, the affair may be a wake-up call for their partners, leading to positive behavioral change. Isn't that a nice way of spinning it, saying uh, she cheats and then she realizes she's unhappy and so she leaves? Uh, a look at outcomes suggests that male perpetrators were more negatively affected by the event. Uh, their results also revealed cheating was preceded by a, a gradual decrease in personal and relationship satisfaction over several years. This could be triggered by a number of reasons, for example, a lack of honest communication or a significant life change, such as having a baby. Uh, in uh, perpetrators, this decline might be a reason for starting an affair, even an intentional distress management strategy, the researchers wrote. I think part of this for a big difference between men and women I, I, yes, there is the financial and the divorce portion of it and men lo losing their kids and all the other negative things that come across, uh, that come along after divorce. But something else that's very telling and I think very important to realize is that um, when you look at, sorry, I, I just realized I'm incredibly dim today. I got to up my lighting game here a little bit. Um, something else I think that's really important too is that a lot of times men can love their wife and be happy with their wife and want to stay with their wife, but either she's maybe gained a little weight or maybe uh, she's not giving up the goods as much as, as men want. Because I firmly believe like men don't have all the toys that, that women have. You know, we just don't, we just, it's not to the same degree. And so men, I still feel men kind of do have a very strong literal biological urge to go out and and sleep around where I think for women, um, maybe I'm wrong, but for women, it seems to be more centered around relationship goals and uh, wanting to get a man versus just wanting to have a little bit of fun. Now, maybe that maybe that's changed in the last 10 or 20 years. It certainly seems like it does. But I think a lot of guys are, I say, you know, I'm really happy with my wife and my kids in the house. And I'm fine the way my life is going, except I'm not getting to dip the wick often enough. And that's a lot of times why they step out is for purely physical reasons. Where I think women, um, they're looking f f both their hypergamous nature, looking to level up. Uh, they're, they're doing it to maybe feel like they're attractive and desirable and sexy again. Uh, they want the tingles and the butterflies from the, the danger and the thrill of it. I'm not exactly sure, and I'd be really interesting to see what actually comes of this, but it doesn't seem, you know, it's such a hard topic to find the truth on because so many times people lie about things. You know, they, like the same thing with when women say, oh, I, I just want a guy that's, you know, relatively successful and funny, and in the meantime, the funny, successful, or somewhat successful guys are all single, and seven women are dating the same guy that's six foot three, muscular, and good looking. So, it's very hard to tell what's the truth out of all this data. Uh, they say unhappiness has been associated with poor outcomes in social life and in previous research. Uh, hence, a decrease in personal well-being might make the future uh, uh, person less attractive, contributing, contributing, contributing to the infidelity of the partner. Uh, separate research has indicated that if your friends are having affairs, you're more likely to cheat too. Well, who, who's it easier to cheat, men or women? Women. Because again, most women just have to say, hello, I'm available and I will sleep with you. And there's a whole lot of guys that'll say, okay, let's do this. Where men, men have to show value to women that they want to cheat on their wife with, they still have to show value to these new women. That's harder to do. Uh, so I don't think a lot of the guys out there are having these large groups of men that are all easily having affairs and and so well frank's having an affair so i'm gonna have one too i don't think that's the men uh they most of the time the men would probably be like not tell anybody about it <laughs> uh they say researchers from reichman university in israel uh, discovered that when adultery becomes the norm feelings of commitment to the current partner are reduced while desire for an alternative mate increases that's hypergamy that's literally like, okay, I'm, I'm falling away from my current husband or whoever, and I'm falling for the new person more. Um, and they warn the phenomenon appeared to affect males more than females. Okay, okay, so let's, let's put a, a pause in that. 
So they're saying that men, as they sleep with the the women that they're cheating uh, on their partner with, on their wives with, or, uh, I guess, um, men start to fall and get feelings for those women and become disassociated with the wife, where women don't do that as much. That's kind of interesting, which, but it does go to show you that women do, or, or men, men do love with their heart more than women do. I mean, it's another example of that. Uh, oh, and let me, let me just pause here for a second. I do have a couple of videos I'm going to do at the end of this. Let me just mention that now. So before you guys all tune out, you miss the videos that I'm going to talk about. Uh, according to the Office of National Statistics, infidelity is one of the most commonly cited reasons for divorce in the UK. A YouGov poll carried out in 2015 revealed that as many as one in five Brits have had an affair. So 20%, that's not good. <laughs> Jeez, that's that's not good. Um, is that all they have from that? Looks like it. So I think this is for multiple reasons. Uh, number one, Men primarily cheat because they're just not getting their physical needs met, period, end of statement. Women cheat for multiple reasons. Uh, they need physical needs met. Uh, they want the attention. They like the butterflies. They get the thrill of of the secrecy of it all. Um, they're, they're maybe looking to step up or step out and, and level up to a, a new partner. So in many cases, the women are, are actually looking to level up and the guys are just getting their meet, needs met. And so I think the guys feel guilty about that, where the women don't because they're getting ready to leave anyway. That's kind of the way that this makes this sound. And number two, let's be honest, if guys get caught or if guys have an affair and they do get caught, they lose. If the woman goes out and has an affair and she gets caught, the guy loses because we know how many of these laws go. So I don't know. It's interesting to see that uh, women just don't really care if—, if about the cheating thing any, uh, nearly as much as the men do. And I think it's for multiple reasons. Uh, this is a video that comes from uh, uh, the Ukraine. I'm going to play just a couple of seconds of this uh, so you guys can see what's going on. And if you're just listening, at the end, I'll do a summary instead of talking over the whole thing. But here you've got a pretty booksum uh, blonde lady. Uh, and this is about a minute and a half, but I'll let you guys get a gist of what she's saying here. Great. Кохані дівчатка, прилетів мені чудовий комент, що скоро ми будемо, як після Другої світової війни, боротися за увагу чоловіків, тому що багато загинуло і всяке таке. Так, на жаль, багато наших чудових, освічених чоловіків загинуло. І це дуже прикро. Але правда в тому, що так не буде. Змагатись ми не будемо за чоловіків. Якщо ви знаєте, то Україна була відома ще до війни як країна нівест. І половина планети Земля шукала українок, щоб одружитись. All right, I'm, gonna, I'm not going to play through the whole thing, but you kind of get the gist here of those of you that are watching the subtitles. So many men have been lost over in Ukraine now uh, that the women realize, hey, there's a shortage of, of like eligible men. And they refuse to compete for those men. They, they will not lower themselves to how dare they do competing for men. So what she talk about instead? Instead of competing for men, instead of maybe two women for every man because there's not enough men, she's literally saying, we'll do like they did after World War II and we'll just bounce out of the country. We'll go either to Europe, we'll go to the Americas, they're all looking for brides, they're looking for women to marry. We'll go over there and continue to be entitled and spoiled uh, because we'd we'd rather do that than have to compete for the leftovers of men in the country. You know, I, I guess you could kind of say I understand that because probably a lot of the men that are available were not conscripted. Maybe they weren't healthy enough or mentally sound enough uh, to go back to battle. But there's an argument I have here that's kind of interesting. And this kind of refutes, well, not refutes, but kind of supports what she's saying a little bit. Uh, I'll play a couple seconds of this and then I'll do a summary of the whole thing. Now this has cringe music over it. So I, I'll, I'm, I'm gonna read as we go, but I'll pause it to read it. 
and and th then those of you listening will get an idea as we go. And it'll also make a break in the cringe music so YouTube doesn't come after me. So he says, basically, regarding the women since the beginning of the conflict, I want to expand on this topic a little bit more. So he says, um, he says uh, uh, I think at one point he says he's a therapist. And he said he's had a thousand consultations uh, for the past year and a half. And I wish they didn't put the subtitle so low because I have to read it through all this crap. Let me, let me step. Does that help? No. Uh, anyway, he says a lot of my clients are men who just uh, were honorable men with dignity. He says 70% of the men. He says have taken their wives with their children or they've taken their girlfriends. And, and they've taken their women out of the country into safe uh, places. And then uh, they either took up arms. Uh, to defend the country. Um, or they just stayed in Ukraine. I, I'm going to fast forward this because I don't want the music to hit me. They said in all, seven out of ten Ukrainian women ditched their men. Um, they, he says, uh, they broke up with their husbands and found themselves new men, Poles, Spanish men, or Germans. Um, they have destroyed their families, These or these the women have destroyed their families and ruined their relations. Um, and I wish I could see what this says a little bit easier without having to, without having, let me, let me pull down the audio so I don't, I don't get whacked for the, uh, and I don't know, this is the tragedy of our time. What's wrong with this world? What's wrong with our women, he says. So here you've got a case, right? If you kind of look at everything, women, women don't feel bad. They're like, hey, I'm getting ready to level up. I don't mind cheating. I'm having a good time. I'm probably going to leave him anyway. If I get, I, that's why I'm cheating. It's very rarely just a physical thing. And then if they do get caught, they're like, well, who cares? I probably, I'm going to get child custody, child support, and he'll have to pay me alimony anyway. And, and uh, so I'm not going to feel guilty about cheating. Then you've got a woman here from the Ukraine, obviously where they've got their problems, saying we're not, we're still not going to compete for the, the leftover men we're too pretty, we're too, you know, wonderful, we're too whatever. We're not going to compete. We're just going to go overseas. She says here, a lot of agencies from most EU countries and especially America say they will deliver a Ukrainian wife to uh, nearly home. They're hung, hunting, looking for Ukrainian women. There's a category of Ukrainian woman who left the country and will not return. Uh, there's another type of Ukrainian woman which left and will return but will not accept you anymore because you're, you're harmful dudes. You always don't like our borscht soup, flowers, you can only ask for woman's day. Being at the stove is our only fate. So here you've got women say, look, we're not gonna, look, you may have gone and defended our country and, and maybe you're, you made it and you're injured and you came back, but may, you're not treating us well enough or, or we're not, you're not being, you know, you're not putting us up on a pedestal so we're going to leave and we're going to go to other countries and we're going to look for other men. Or, or maybe you, I don't know, lost a leg in the war and you won't be able to earn as much, whatever. We're, we're, go, we're going to find other men. And you got this dude. And this dude's like, the, you know, the, here's men who, who just were fighting for their country. They protected their women. They, they took them across, their, or their girlfriends, took them across the border got them to safety, and then went back to fight for the freedom of the country. And by the time 70% of them have found out their women have already moved on to other men. Can you imagine fighting for your country only to have the women be like, oh, thanks, lol, bye. You know, there's something to be said when it comes to, in, 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 in the historical past, women were protected because they were the innocent. They, they, and again, I've said this multiple times. In many ways, they are like children, and that they they can't defend themselves as well as a man can. 
and they're they're not as strong, they're not as durable, they won't put up with nearly as much as men will. Men can live and struggle through many, many more hardships than women can. You know, a perfect example of that, ironically, is I'm out here on, on my land, right? My shower, and, and this is not a, like a humble brag, I'm just telling you how I'm living. You know, my shower right now is a is a solar sun bag. Like I, I put freezing, the water's really cold because it's winter time. The water's cold, I put it in this bag, I lay it out in the sun, and sometimes the water temperature gets up to be 60 degrees, 55 degrees. I hang it from the top of a ladder, and a, a, like a step ladder, you know, that's in the shape of an A, and and I pop the pop the release on it and shower. And I'll tell you what, when I'm showering out there, there's a lot of days. I, I mean, it's hard to control yourself. You're just like, oh, oh, because oh, it's so cold. And in the meantime, you're standing outside when it's, you know, 45 or 50 degrees. So you're taking a very cold shower. You're outside where it's cold. And for those of you, like 50 degrees, what is that? Maybe, I don't know, 10 degrees Celsius. Uh, yeah, that sounds about right. 10 degrees, 15 degrees Celsius. And the wind's blowing. And it's cold, I'll tell you. But you know something? I also find it very refreshing after you towel off and put on warm clothes and come in and sit in front of the fire, you're like, oh, I'm glad I did that. Like it really kind of amps you up a little bit. But when you're doing it, it sucks. Is there any women out here that would do this? Not that I know of. I don't know too many women that are gonna take, maybe an athlete that does ice baths or something. There's not many women that are gonna do that. Not many women that, you know, when the fire goes out at 4 a.m., this building is many nights, 35 or 40 degrees. And you're just, hunkered under the blanket with a blanket thrown over my dog to keep him warm because he's got a very thin coat. I, I like the struggle. I don't know many women that would. Men can men will put up with a lot more. And so historically, we've protected the women. We've looked out for them. We've guarded them. But now women say they're just as good, if not better than men, and that they're tougher and they're stronger and they're braver and more stunning and brave. And and as men continue to protect them and look out for them, the women spit in their faces. The women put them down. And I think more and more men are waking up to it. I'll tell you what, there's a whole lot of Ukrainian men that are waking up to it. Because they go off and defend their country and just to have their women say, we want better than you. Or they left and they're not coming back because they found a... Can you imagine having a wife and maybe kids or a girlfriend and helping them get out of the country and then going back, risking yourself to, to free your country and your homeland only to reach out to your wife or your, your girlfriend and say, I made it like I'm okay. Uh, there, you know, I, maybe I'm injured or something happened or everything conflicts coming to a close. I'm going home. Uh, when can, you know, like, when can you come and meet me? And she says, nah, I'm good, man. I, like I, I met, a guy in Germany, or I met a, a guy in Spain. I, I met this Italian guy. He, he, he cooks amazing pasta and he loves my borscht and I'm not coming home. Men really get a raw deal when it comes to relationships and women today. And I think the men that hurt the most and the men that are, are saddened by this and the men that lose sleep over this at night are the men that were raised traditional that women are special and women will love them if they're just a good provider and if they do the right thing and blah, 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 blah. Those are the men that are hurting. The blue pill men and the purple pill guys, they're the ones that get hurt. They're constantly being hurt. But not the guys that, that adjust, not the guys that realize this is the new, this is the new order of things. And, and, that you'll never get unconditional, quote unquote, mommy love from a woman where she just takes care of you and loves you because you're you and you're awesome and you're funny and you're unique. That's, that's a pipe dream. Women are going to love you for A, you're attractive, and B, what you provide. That's it. And it's always been that to some you know, degree, but usually once a woman got married and had kids, she said, okay, I'm going to stick with my man, where, where now it's too easy to bail. So here's the reality of things. If you do want a woman, if you want to regularly have a woman to sleep with, 
and do things with and spend time with, you better have muscles. You better get to the gym and be healthy. You better have great communication skills and be funny and interesting and outgoing. You, you better have some game. You better know how to play the game. And then you still need to come to this understanding that you'll never have unconditional true love. She will love you for you as long as she is getting what she wants out of it. And she may disappear at any moment in time. So what kind of love do you give that woman? You give that woman the same kind of love you'd give for a, maybe a like a guy friend, except obviously the extra because you're being romantic. But you, there is no head over heels, I'd take a bullet for you and I got your back thick and thin and no matter what happens, baby, I'll make sure we're okay at night. No, the new way is, hey, you know what? It's If you want to be a part of my life, awesome. If you screw up, you're out. And we'll do this as long as you behave. But if you misbehave, you're out. And that's it. And then when she misbehaves, she's out. Or if she leaves you, you're like, oh, man, that sucks. Anyway, moving on. That's literally where men have to be now. Hard times make strong men. This, it's, this is what it is to be a strong man. It's not just being able to weather the storm financially or with work or you know money prices going up or harder to buy a home. Being a strong man also is the realization you may be alone, that, that you may consider yourself lucky if you have a couple of guy friends and, and maybe really lucky if you have somebody to go on a couple of dates with and sleep with. Because the reality of that is becoming more and more slim, again, unless you're like literally a top, I don't know, whatever percenter. You know, that's all there is to it. That is, that is the world we live in today. So toughen up, buttercup. You know, the, the more you see of this stuff, the more you're going to realize it. And, it. and it only sucks if you have the wrong mindset about it. If you can find the right mindset about this, you'll be okay. And, and you know something, at this point in time, I, I've never been one to say, hey, you know what? Hire a lady of the night. Hire a professional. I, I think it's fine if men do, but I've never really been an advocate. I've always said like, eh, it's better to find a woman that actually likes you. She'll definitely be into the bedroom more. She'll, she'll you know, it's, it's a much more meaningful connection, but, but it's becoming much more tough and, and difficult and challenging to have that real connection with women anymore because they're growing up seeing this stuff on TikTok and all the social media sites and they're being told they're stunning and brave and they can do no wrong. And, and when they do wrong, they blame everybody but themselves. There's no accountability or learning from anything they've done. Or, or they just say, oh, I'm, I'm actually the one that's being harmed out of this. It, it, it's, not gonna, it's not going to bode well. That's how men are going to win. You toughen up. You understand the, the new way of the world. And you financially protect your assets. And you either don't get involved or you do only so much as it, you get a few basic needs met. And if you want love and you want friendship, have a good group of friends and get yourself a cat or a dog and, and work your way around it. Because this right here, what you see on screen, she's never going to love you. She's never going to be on your team. Only if, you know, if she's a seven and you're a 10, then she'd probably love you. But only while you're a 10. If things went wrong, she's going to bounce like everybody else. That's all there is to it. Uh, guys, um, if you're here on uh, YouTube, make sure to join me over on betterbachelor.locals.com. I'll have another video out here for you, probably dropping right around the same time. So uh, go check it out on my page uh, or if, if you are just caught this on your YouTube feed because notifications aren't going out like they used to. Uh, and we'll see you in the next one. Mm -hmm.